Are you being undermined at work or are you too sensitive and too defensive? Well, the fact that you're asking this question is showing very much the entire dance of being undermined because being undermined makes you doubt yourself and your perceptions in favor of someone else and you feel deflated and drained and on edge. You're second guessing yourself, you're afraid to bring things up, you're hesitant, you're waffling, you might have been a self-starter and someone who initiated but now you're, you're paralyzed, you're in freeze state because no matter what you do it will be nitpicked and undermined so you're just you're, you're ready to have that doubt. Because that's what undermining does, it makes you doubt yourself. So the fact that you're asking this question, yeah, you're being undermined. And guess what? Being undermined isn't always a direct, aggressive attack. In fact, more than likely, it's indirect and passive aggressive and sneaky. So we're going to go into the ways that you're undermined at work. And I know you're feeling deflated and drained, but this is going to give you the clarity that you need to get out of that doubt and fear and constant um, on edge feeling and, and get some more empowerment back in your perception of things. So, of course, one of the first ways of being undermined is being micromanaged. When you're micromanaged, you have a, a sense of anticipating the nitpicking and the criticism to a point where you do get, get into that freezing, that freeze state, that paralyzed state, because no matter what you do, it's going to be wrong. But what's really key about micromanaging that I've realized is it's not just somebody always controlling you and they're always communicating with you. It's actually a mix of no communication and then a ton of nitpicking on the product. But then as soon as you've applied that criticism in that case to other cases, then the game changes. Like it's, it's, they, the, the micromanager just wants to change to change. It's not because they have an overriding rationale or sensible reason or a, a, a competent issue. It's the fact that they just want to change to change and have their, they want their control on everything. So, you know, you might have written a very, a very cogent, clear, great blog, but they just want to change maybe to possibly just so that they've changed it, just to kind of undermine you, just to show you that they're always right and you're always wrong. Or, and and it's, it's really to make that point more than make the product itself better. So it's, it's not even, and sometimes make, they're often insecure managers. They're not used to, to leading in a way that's showing power through your persuasion rather than showing power through making demands and and saying do it like me because I said so. So that's not a way, that's a tyrant's way of grabbing power and it's more of a taker's way of grabbing power but a, a good leader knows how to coach and delegate and give you the chance to rise into your potential because they trust you and they trust your expertise and they they utilize your expertise. They notice this person has a really good psychological pro prowess in, in, their, in, in how they write, so maybe I'll let them do that. And then maybe in other circumstances, they need to be micromanaged in this way, but um, I'll let them do their thing in this circumstance. So anyway, that's an obvious one. I'd say that's a direct form of undermining. It's very clear. Um, second is the opposite of micromanaging, which is stonewalling and excluding and no communication. So, it's not, I wouldn't say no communication is the opposite of micromanaging, to be clear, because I think that's a huge part of it. But anyway, so the other side is non-involvement in form of leaving you out. So then you're left, so you're excluded from pertinent meetings and then you write something and then the micromanager has a great way of swooping down and saving the day because they love to be the savior they love to fancy themselves that last minute savior that everyone needs because everyone is just so incompetent and I need to come in and save the day so the exclusion is leaving you out of pertinent things leaving you out of certain emails just general stonewalling so for instance you might, you might initiate a meeting and they just flake out and they don't even they don't even bother to talk to you about it. So that's the other thing. Um, complete stonewall, silent treatment, and 
that kind of behavior. Another way of undermining is by complimenting things that don't matter. So they'll compliment your car, they'll compliment your, they'll compliment like something you like ate for lunch that has nothing to do with you. Like you didn't create, you didn't make that food. So they'll compliment things that don't matter. Often in, in bonus points for the underminer if they can undermine it subtly. So with me, there was a, a, an intense focus on I drove a BMW. And the reason I drove a BMW, the true context, is that I had to sell my Toyota Camry and then I drove my parents' old BMW that was sitting on their farm not being used. And so, and the other context of this car is it's not an ideal car because it doesn't lock, but people think it's a rich car. So I have a constant problem of worrying about being robbed because I actually have been robbed. Um, I, they only had Halloween costumes to steal because obviously because it doesn't lock, I don't leave much in my car. But the, there's a whole story to that, but, but the compliment is always insinuating that I am a, a little rich princess, kind of. It's kind of that line. Um, it's, not, it's not directly said, of course, but it's a, an undermining that, and it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with really who I am. I just happen to have that car based on actually some misfortune. So. Anyway, people, people project all kinds of stuff on that brand, and it's interesting because they, uh, they, they, they almost love to create that story, and you let them, but it's all undermining. It's just it's ridiculous. Another way of being undermined is by triangulating you with somebody else. So they might make a, they might make a big performance out of talking or complimenting somebody else in front of you and then looking at your reaction instead of the person they're complimenting, which is pretty obvious and kind of strange. But the reason why is they're assuming because they're a jealous person that you'll be jealous. No, it's pretty transparent what's going on. Or they'll make a point of undermining you by having the business manager edit something instead of you when you are a, an editor writer. And they do that in front of you. They could, they're making a point to undermine you in front of you. And so it's, again, these are indirect, but they're also pretty direct. They're just straight up undermining right in your face. Um, and so these ways of, of being undermined at work are, are they really do, they, they really do impact you, but at the same time, they're extremely petulant and immature and a sign of a very insecure person because that insecurity of that person has a need to undermine you in order for them to feel better. And so what you see with that person that's undermining is they may have that mask of superiority that is hiding an, ex an inferiority complex. And so they're glossing over their own fears of being obsolete or being outdated with having to insult you to bring you down a peg or um, put you in, get you in line, get, get kind of, um, it, there's a sense that they think, they think that you need to get on, in order for them to feel better, you need to cower before them and or submit. And if they don't realize that if they had more confidence, then they would have been able to get rise to get you into the ultimate potential by having trust in you, having clear communication, having a sense of extending more goodwill and benefit of the doubt than all of this undermining, which only reveals their own extreme sense of inferiority and insecurity. And they want you to doubt yourself like they must be doing. Um, and when you are doubting their, yourself, then they can kind of act as though you're incompetent and too nervous and maybe too second-guessing second and then they almost act like, well, why aren't you doing this? It's like, well, of course I'm not going to do anything until I hear the yes from you. I'm waiting for you. So, anyway, 
these are ways that you're being undermined and it's so deflating, it's so draining and it can really turn somebody who's a self-starter with enthusiasm into somebody that's in freeze state and just is constantly second guessing themselves. And so when you're asking, am I being undermined, it shows you're being undermined. Because you're, you have so much doubt in your perception that you're not, you're thinking, well, maybe I'm crazy. It's like, it's kind of self gaslight. So the way to get through it is by recognizing it and knowing that there are so many little sneaky, underhanded ways that people undermine. And you, once you recognize it, you could even say, are you undermining me right now? Well, you can't. You can't say that. But it's hard. It's hard to deal with.